go beyond this stage and try to forge alliances also with people we don't necessarily agree with on quite major questions. For example, with business. The only, this can only be accomplished by recognizing that disagreement and even conflict can be positive so long as the areas where it is possible to agree are sought out, identified, and built upon. We must find where the circles of our, con of our concerns overlap. And at least one of these overlaps in the circles ought to be saving the planet. I don't see any other way of generating citizen enthusiasm, involvement, and qualitat the qualitative and quantitative leap in scale that is now required. I won't have time to explain how this could be extended to the South, and I would like very much to work with people like Victor Manotti, who had so much to say about the international financial institutions and the kind of new international institutions that we would need. I am going to stick to the American side because I'm in America, and this is an American, largely American conference. But of course, this would not exclude the South, and it would require also international institutions uh, basically changed. Nor have I time to say more about the content and the financing of the necessary environmental investments. But what I can do is assure you that conversion to an ecological economy is technically feasible. The schemes for new taxes have been thought through. They're in the boxes. We know how to do this. this the prototypes already exist for new industrial products, for lightweight materials, for renewable energy. The machinery is ready to hum into action the moment people can make their politicians accept the challenge. Capitalism is not sane in the sense that most people understand sanity. We humans normally think about our futures, the future of our children, and often the future of our country and the world. The market, on the contrary, operates in the eternal present, which by definition cannot even entertain the notion of the future, and therefore excludes safeguards against future looming destruction unless these safeguards are imposed upon it by law. We need law for sure, and political forces with the backbone to propose and to vote that law into existence. But we also need to think about human motivation. Remember the prestige of the dollar a year men of the 1940s, and imagine what, it might, what might happen if we could transpose it into the world of 21st century capitalism. A significant number of contemporary captains of capitalism, all of them with bloated, unimaginable salaries, might come to believe that money is all very well, but is there nothing more? Why not found an extremely exclusive order of the Earth Defenders or the Environmental Knights or the carbon conquerors who alone, in recognition of their special contributions to national and international environmental conversion efforts, would have the right to display a highly visible emblem on a banner in front of their house, on their cars, <laughs> on a golden rosette in their buttonholes like the French Légion d'honneur, like the Congressional Medal of Ecological Honor, the sign of belonging to the small assembly of the anointed who have decided to save the earth. It would appeal to their competitive spirit. <laughs> finally, finally, and this is my last point, myth has always been the driving force of every great human achievement, from Greek democracy to the Renaissance to the Enlightenment to the American and French revolutions. So it must be in the coming age of ecological stewardship. If we want to change, and change fast enough, the way the majority thinks and acts, we must start with the social forces that we have right here and right now and no others. We can't dream about what it would be like if we had different social forces. 
For this, we will need six M's, starting with money, management, media. But even more important than these three M's, we must try to create a new sense of mission and motivation and myth at the noblest level. Myth, in this sense, has nothing to do with storytelling or lies, but incorporates the deepest motivations of human behavior. It empowers us to believe that we can accomplish what we must accomplish. It inspires in us the desire for honor and for a life's work which transcends death. The elites already have money, management, and media. On our side, we have mission, motivation, and myth. If we can bring together all these, the future will take care of itself. Thank you.